I'm a little butterfly, so look, I know I look like a mess and a half right now, but um, I'm coming to you on this rainy, beautiful, wet Sunday, and uh, oh, the rain has started before I even left out the parking lot, but I felt like doing a vlog today. Um, I think I'm going to like actually sit and like do a video video today too, but I know I was going to do my plasma today. I'm going to donate plasma, so... I figured why not take y'all with me and we could talk while on the way. I don't know how the weather is by you guys, but I mean, it's not bad here yet. But then again, I live in Louisiana, so what's bad for me uh, I, might not be, well, what's bad for y'all might not be what's bad for me because I mean, we're used to this kind of shit this time of year anyway. Well, while this weather is passing through, I hope everybody is, you know, being safe. I hope everybody is, you know, I don't know. What are you guys reading right now, anyway? I started reading White Fragility Friday. Well, listening to White Fragility Friday because I'm listening to it on audiobook. Because um, I'm doing a Blackout Buddy read and it was going to take a while to actually get to me if I had ordered the physical book. And... I decided I was gonna just buy the Kindle version and then I learned about a uh, little app Libro FM I think it's called so I got the audiobook there and then we're also buddy reading White Rage which I got the Kindle version of so I'm gonna actually physically be reading that one but I think I'm like 79% of the way through. I think I have like two hours left. So I'm sure I'm going to finish today because I'm going to listen to it while I'm donating plasma. And that usually takes 45 minutes to an hour. So that's most of my time right there. Sorry if it's shaky. The roads in Louisiana are not always smooth. They're pretty bumpy. Especially, you know, by my house. So sorry for the turbulence. Um, especially with everything going on, what have you guys actually been doing? Like, have you guys been to any protests? I haven't. I've been at work. Which, I know in New Orleans, they've been protesting every night this week. But I have been using my social media to the best of my abilities. Even though I don't have that big of a platform, I've still been using my platform for the this purpose um i've been putting a lot of links for donations and where you can even if you don't want to donate if you can't donate where you can sign the petitions even just supporting other black youtubers booktubers whatever it may be it doesn't necessarily have to be, be booktube but there have been a lot of like you know black creators that have been getting a lot of shine that have been getting a lot of you know everybody's doing a lot of shout outs and giving their appreciation i'm sorry y'all i'm giving y'all a lot of pauses i'm um i don't have the best 2020 vision <laughs> and uh driving in the rain is kind of like makes me squint which is not as bad because the sun is out now if it was dark then we'd be having an issue <laughs> which i would probably not even be out if it was dark because i know I know me <laughs> i know my eyes i know my abilities i had in my mind like before i left the house i kind of knew what i wanted to talk about and now that i'm actually doing this i just i kind of don't remember like what i'm talking about but anyway back to the book that i'm currently reading when i was listening to white fragility yesterday and i made a post like on twitter I made a post on twitter about it because it hit me like when i was listening to it i was like i wonder like i wish I could see like white people reaction like when they're reading it like I wonder if they're still like defensive about it or I wonder if they're still argumentative about it or are they more accepting like do they sit back and be like like fuck you know like we really do this shit like we really this is fucked up like I do this like how like I can't believe I do this to myself and I was just thinking about this morning when I was thinking about that, like, I wonder if white people take a racism talk better from other white people, or are you guys just as defensive when it's coming from another white person? Because I know sometimes black people take certain conversations better coming from somebody of the same race or somebody that's the same sex as them versus the other. So I don't, Emma, I was just thinking, I was like, 
ways for white people that really are trying to be supportive of us and like really want to know how they can help i feel like the best way that y'all can help and like the best things that y'all can do for us is to have these conversations with your uh, with your you know your other white people because when we bring up race and i know everybody sees it they get like cringy you know like they cringe up or they lock up and then they just shut down and it's like they're not even listening anymore because i feel like automatically automatically when we talk about race y'all get in the defensive of that we're trying to call you racist and it's like just because we start talking about racism or something you might have said might have offended us i'm not saying you're racist but hey you said this and it offended me and this is why it offended me because x y and z but y'all don't hear the x y and z because you're already getting so defensive about it y'all don't even hear it like that's just something to think about like i figured that's like the best way that y'all can help is to well first educate yourself make sure, look look back at the things that you do and be like i want to do i do this do i do that or things that you know you do that can be offensive to the black community that y'all can change like even if it's something that's dismissive it's offensive so i think educate yourself first and then have these conversations with your other white people with your white community because when we have it it's not like we're whining or it's not like we're being sensitive so maybe it might sound better coming from you guys because she talked about this a lot in her book now white fragility is made by a white author directed towards white people about racism and i know she was saying that a lot of times that where she's had to bring up race to her white community to white people they still get defensive with her they're still they still shut down automatically as if you're calling them racist instead of actually looking at the issue and looking at what they did and be like you know what i'm gonna change I, that you're right that was a problem they automatically well that's not what i meant it doesn't matter what you meant this is what was perceived this is what was heard and i figure right now that's the best thing that the white community can do especially the, the white people that are trying to be supportive of us that's the best thing that y'all can do right now to be supportive and i really hope like i'm seeing a lot of like on instagram and twitter and i was thinking it too and youtube too like i hope in a couple of months that y'all keep this same energy this same fire like i don't need in a couple of months the white booktubers and the white community going right back to their silence and their just back to the normal like right now y'all showing so much love for black authors and black books and black characters and black creators in a couple of months are y'all gonna be right back where y'all were before this and like i don't want it to we i always say just me the black community don't want y'all just to come out when there's a problem if we keep this energy and we keep this fire hopefully things can change because i feel like we don't get any change because i feel like they throw us a little cookie to kind of just be like okay here you go and expect us to be quiet just like i feel like when they did arrest that one police officer for george floyd i felt like they thought oh we'll just arrest him and then they'll shut up they'll be quiet they'll be satisfied and they didn't know what to do when we weren't quiet and we weren't satisfied it was like that's not enough i don't think they knew what to do with it so i hope in a couple of and nobody is saying that Y'all only have to support black people now. That's not what anybody is saying. But don't forget about us and put us right back in the back of the closet and the only time you take us out is for Black History Month or when something like this happens. This needs to, we wanna be a regular part of people's TBRs and a regular part of people's appreciation as much as your white creators that you love and your white authors that you love because I love a lot of books by white people. I love a lot of books by black people. You know what I mean? So it's not, nobody's saying that y'all only have to read books by black people and black authors. Like, come on. That's not what anybody is saying. But don't go back to the only time you give a shout out to black authors and black, um, what well, people of color characters. It's for Black History Month. I mean, we're black every month and the issues that go on, go on every freaking month. That's not something that only happens once a year just keep that in mind that we're not something we're not a, a fashion trend that's only you know oh it's black history month so now it's, let's wrap the black people season you know what i mean that's all that we're concerned about it's not that we're not being 
appreciative of your support we're just being cautious because this has happened before where y'all act like y'all are so outraged and so ready for change and then in a month or two when it's not big trending or when things have kind of cooled the fuck off you'll go right back to the normal and that's the problem that's what we don't want to see so it's not that we're not being appreciative we're just being cautious with our appreciation when i just want to automatically be like yeah they're doing great and then next month you're right back to how you were so we have to change have to create a change in ourselves and that go for black and white people because a lot of black people do this too where we're only loud for our culture and loud for our race when something bad happens and then when it calms down you don't see any appreciation for the black people for your own people so that's not just a hit at white people that's a hit for black people too and all people are going we need to be like this all the time okay I know this seems like a long long drive but it's really not usually this is like 10 minutes to get here but because it's raining I, I drive slower in the rain because of I mean I'm not going grandpa slow but I don't want to slide in the water so just in case y'all don't want to. I'm sure I'm going to edit some of my more quieted parts out because the brain bar moments this so is my super long. Also, I put in, which I didn't make a video for the Black Buddy, the Black Buddy, the Blackout Buddy read, because I didn't have enough time, but I did make some posts about it. But um, in my post, I did say that they is hosted by Books with Shay, but there is a website set out set up for the Blackout Buddy read, and on that website, there's two um, different designs for shirts. You can purchase a shirt. The shirt's like twenty dollars. $10 from those shirts goes towards the Black Collective. So I did purchase my shirt. Um, I, if you guys, you know, wanted to, I know some people like to donate, but they want to get something out of it. So if you're one of those people that want to donate, but you also want something out of it, you can purchase your shirt, you'll get a shirt, and then $10 goes towards the Black Collective. And there's also a bunch of petitions that I'm gonna post down below so you guys can actually, if, if you want to sign petitions versus you know donating because you might not have the means to donate which is fine i'm going to post that and also some other sites where you can donate as well under this video oh speaking of there has been a lot of talk in the black community about supporting more black owned businesses so what i really want you guys to do is to comment under this video any black owned bookstores i know a lot of them are online right now because I realized looking for smaller bookstores, period, to, um, to, to give my money to, like in Louisiana, there's not a lot of black owned ones. I think even on all of the lists, like for black owned bookstores, all of the lists for the black owned bookstores in Louisiana, I think the most I found was three. And only one of, the, and I think one of them wasn't even up and running anymore, because their website was disabled. And even when you look on a map, like they're not really, they have an address, but on the map it's a whole different business there. And the other two are like hours drive away from where I am. So we need more black-owned bookstores. Some some states have plenty, but some states don't. So me supporting other black owned bookstores is gonna be more of like an online thing where I'm ordering books from them versus actually being there because in the state that I live in it's not it's not common. That's not gonna say that I'm not gonna still support my local bookstores as well. Because y'all know I don't get down with Barnes and Noble anyway, because they are too fucking expensive. Like I've been saying this a long time ago. I cannot rock with Barnes and Noble because Barnes and Noble I feel like they ass rape you on books. And I say this in one of my videos a while ago, the same book that I look at in Barnes and Noble, it's like $5 cheaper on Amazon and my shipping is free. Okay? I'm not, I will lie if I tell you I'm gonna stop shopping on Amazon because Amazon is my lifeline. I order so much shit from Amazon, it's ridiculous. But I'm saying, what I'm saying is I'm gonna still support black owned businesses online and still, but still I'm gonna be or, ordering from, I'm still be using Amazon, but in the mean, like still intermediately, I'm gonna be ordering from black owned bookstores because I don't have that many in my area. And I'm also gonna be finding some black owned businesses in my own area in Louisiana to try to support. I know I know of a lot of restaurants, but like other than food, 
it's kind of hard to support and i learned which i kind of figured this there is not a lot of like black on grocery stores so even a lot so we still can't say we're only gonna shop at black on stores because you're still gonna have to go to like walmart and like places like it's a grocery shop because we don't really have it and i was thinking about this and i feel like because in my mind i want to own i want to own my own businesses later on i would like to own my own bookstore i had plans of owning my own like tea room i know me right i had plans of having my own kind of like like a Victoria's Secret mixed with Rue 21 kind of vibes. You know what I mean? Like something like that. Like a clothing store, but lingerie at the same time. I have big goals. And like a lot of people don't know that. Like I'm very ambitious. And then I added grocery store on my list recently. Because I'm like, wow, there's not a lot of black owned grocery stores. And I mean, fuck, I've been working in retail a long goddamn time. Like I, I, I know that that's hard work to us store the business. Especially like I feel like a grocery store because you're trying to get so many different people to put their brand in your store and so i feel like of course i don't think it's going to be easy it's going to be one step at a time but i do have a lot of goals for having my own business and to be my own my own boss so i think a lot of black people do but a lot of black people are also hesitant and kind of afraid to do it because they don't know how to get started or you know where are you gonna get your funds to start this up at but i want to do my research because i do 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 <laughs> want to be my own boss i want to own my own businesses i want to be my own ceo i think a lot of people want that but when they start to think about everything that they have to put into it to get it started it kind of makes them shy away from it because it's like damn that's a lot which it is a lot but I just know I'm such an ambitious person. I will take it all on myself because I know it's going to pay off later. And I'm going to look back at my shit and be like, we finally did it. And I think that's what a lot of us need to do. Even being on BookTube, people that want to be authors, a lot of people self-publish. Because it's like, why wait around years for a publishing company to pick you up when you can self-publish? A lot of people don't want to self-publish because you don't get as much you don't get as much what the fuck uh advertisement as if you went with a publishing company it's gonna be a lot of self-advertising but hey a lot of people self-publish start off self-publishing and a publishing company pick them up later it's just that you might it might not be what you want to do you might have to do stuff you don't want to do to get to what you want to do so everybody has to start somewhere so just think about that if you are writing and you are author, don't sit around and feel like you need to wait for a publishing company to pick you up. I'm not saying don't try, but don't put everything on that. Try to like start off and do it yourself. Like you can still reach out to the publishing companies and if everybody, you know, if they tell you no, don't sit there and be like, oh, I'm never doing this. Start self-publishing. Because there are a lot of self-published authors that are still self-published to this day that are fucking amazing and they are underrated. And when you read their books, you're like, who the fuck did not pick them up? So it's just a lot going on. I just hope everybody's been safe, especially everybody going to these protests. And even with the weather today, if y'all are still planning on protesting with how bad the weather is supposed to be, just be safe. I'm at the Plasma Center and I'm about to go in. And of course, you cannot record when you're in the Plasma Center because it's a HIPAA violation. Because you are in a medical setting, which I completely understand. So, thank you guys for watching my vlog. I may or may not be back on the ride home. But I probably will be back after I finish reading White Fragility to tell you guys about it. But I'm going to do like a full review for it anyway. So, yo. Plasma is a no-go today. Because obviously, since of the tropical storm that is supposed to happen... They closed at 12 and it is 2.09. Which means I could have stayed at home. But uh, it is what it is. That's people rules. I understand. They show that they care about their employees. But since I'm not going to get plasma, I will be talking to you guys on my ride home. Because honestly, I want to know what in the hell is going on with jk rowling okay so i woke up to this this morning <laughs> with her being transphobic now um i understand the book community has always always had she's always done something 
okay? J.K. Rowling has always been a problem, just not her books, which I get, because um, I love me some Harry Potter, but now I feel like, I don't, I'm not like y'all, I don't own the whole Harry Potter book set, because honestly, I didn't read all of the Harry Potter book in this order. I watched, I watched all of the books, I mean, no, 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 sorry. <laughs> I watched all of the movies and I never watched, I never read any of the books. Like, I watched every single Harry Potter movie, I think, except for. It was not the last, because I watched the last movie. The movie that was before the last one. I didn't watch that one. So, I don't know what goes on in that chapter of Harry Potter. But every time, every single fucking time when I'm like, you know what? This year, oh, I'm tripping. This year is gonna be the year where I buy the fucking Harry Potter box set so I can have all of the fucking books because I do want to read all the books. I read the first book, and uh, yeah, that was about it. So every time, every time I'd be like, I'm about to buy this fucking box set, some motherfucking shit happened, and I'd be like, you know what? I don't need to pay my money for that, I don't need to do that. Like, something always happens every fucking time. Like, bitch, why can't you just behave? Like, come on, why you can't, why can't you just fucking behave like an adult? Okay, look, I don't, I don't know personally firsthand. I mean, I've seen some of the tweets she tweeted, so I'm not even gonna sit here and try to go word for word. But, fuck. Like, you know how to fuck some shit up. Why did you have to mess this up? And I understand Harry Potter is not being punished for this young lady's um, words and somewhat ignorance, okay? Because I know some people love her. I don't know her, and to be honest, a lot of her reputation, I don't really care for her. But I like Harry Potter. So it's not a her thing, but I like Harry Potter. I'm not a fan of J.K. Rowling, but I am a fan of her books. I'm a fan of Harry Potter. Now, I can see Harry Potter, you know, yeah, she put some shit in there that was like, you know what, bitch, that's wrong. But that's different. It's a different story. I think a lot of people agree with me. A lot of people are not going to throw out the Harry Potter books. They're just not going to fuck with her. Which is kind of the same thing, because I feel like if I buy your books, I'm supporting you. It has nothing to do with the Harry Potter legacy, but I feel like if I pay my money for your books, i you're going to get the benefits of me buying the books either way. So, I mean, I don't know, but I, I just, it's so much drama. Go oh, and what the hell is a, I was, you remember I told you I was getting caught up from book two because I haven't been there. So I'm getting caught up on a drama. What the hell is the shit on bookstagram with the, the pods, the social pods or whatever. And it's supposed to, from what I understand, it's supposed to help smaller booktubers, um, get a bigger following like we like I don't know like it's supposed to be us conversing with like the bigger name booktubers and it's supposed to help us get a bigger following or something like that S something like that explain it to me in more detail but uh, I heard there was some drama going on with that too that the bigger booktubers didn't, didn't feel like it was fair for the smaller booktubers to get the benefits of that or some shit in that area and I feel like that's selfish as fuck if that's, if that's what's going on. And y'all are the prime example of people that make it big and forget where they came from. Because at one point, everybody started off small. Some people blow up faster than others, which I've been on booktube almost six years. Come August, August will make my six-year anniversary on booktube. And I'm only at 300 subscribers. That's all for that. I'm sorry, y'all. Something fell. And it was just like, what the hell is that? But, like I said, I've almost been on BookTube for six years, and I've I'm only at 300 and something subscribers. They have people that literally just started BookTube that are already at 500 subscribers, and it's just how the fuck does that happen? Not not nothing about them, but like I said, people different channels grow at different speeds. Like they had one booktuber that I was looking at this morning he doesn't even have one video on his channel yet but you know he's pre-hyped his channel you know he's pre-advertised his channel before he's actually put his first video and he already has 500 plus subscribers 
Not one video yet though. But you see what I'm saying? Like how? Or you have people that have been on booktube for like maybe four months and you're already at a thousand fucking subscribers. You know, like I said, nothing on you. Congratulations to you. But it's just like how does the book community decide who gets the biggest subscribers and who don't? And how selfish are you as being a creator that's kind of made it? That you're saying it's selfish for the smaller booktubers to get the benefit of trying to make it. Cause that's why I'm that's why I'm seeing is that you getting mad because I'm trying to get to where you are. You feel like you don't want to do any handouts, but it's kind of not handouts. And I know a lot of people feel that way with me. It's like, damn, we've been on YouTube for this long and we don't even have 500 subscribers. Like, we can't even get that. How the fuck are you doing it? But like I said, that's not done on them. That's not their fault. So like I said, it's congratulations to you, bitch. Because um, I know I subscribed to a new booktuber yesterday. She's she has one video so far, but she's already past 500 subscribers. And you know, that's okay, because I support you too. I'm one of those fucking subscribers. Because if the content is good and it's something I know I can get into, I'm gonna subscribe. So I get it. Everybody's different. Everybody's channel grows at a different rate, but with the pod thing, I, I feel like it started out as a good idea, and then you got some people that made it and that became whiny about it. It was like, no, no, that's not fair. They need to grow how we grew. But bitch, how? How did you grow? They'll say, share your experiences. What did you do to get to where you were? I don't know. It seemed like it's just a lot of shit going on <laughs> in a booktube world. And I said this a while ago, too, and also in one of my videos. I was like, when I first started booktube, it was not this much drama, at least that I knew about. It was kind of calm. It was like one of those communities that didn't, that was kind of there for each other, that didn't have all of the shit. Now, nah, it's just as fucking messy as the rest of the fucking YouTube community and Twitter community and Instagram community. We got just as much fucking drama going on. It is ridiculous, y'all. I thought we were, I thought we were better than that. <laughs> Fuck. Don't get me wrong. I know there's going to be drama anywhere, no matter what, but damn. I'm so happy I stay out of the way and I stay out of the mess and out of the drama because y'all couldn't handle my pettiness. Like, y'all honestly could not handle my pettiness. So I'm happy I stay out of the drama and out of the way. Yeah, I'm gonna go home. Oh, oh speaking of, because I'm, I'm not even gonna lie, I'm about to go home and watch World of Dance. So I'm not even going home and read. <laughs> but has anybody been watching World of Dance? Is anybody like a World of Dance fan? Like, I love that fucking show. Like, now, I have no dance background whatsoever, besides, because, of course, being black, I grew up in the church, as most black people do, and I was on the dance team, so, and I enjoyed that, but I like to dance in my house, too, but as for school-wise, I play, like, sports, sports, not saying that dancing is not a sport, because it is, because y'all do some wild shit, but, like, I played, like, basketball, and I ran track and stuff, I didn't do, like, the dance and the cheerleading and stuff like that, but... I love watching it. Like, y'all be moving me. Like, I, I finally watched the two episodes, the first two episodes I had recorded yesterday for the fourth season. And I'm blown the fuck away. I love the fact that they're getting more, like, ballet people on there, especially the black ballerinas. Like, y'all know how rare black ballerinas are? Oh, and, and other shows. I love RuPaul's Drag Race. I know a lot of y'all are into Drag Race. So... I want to know, like, how did y'all feel about the season ending? Like, how did y'all feel about who won? Did y'all feel like they deserved it? Because, look, don't get me wrong. I'm not mad at Jada for winning. I, like, like all three finalists, I felt like deserved that shit. But Heidi deserved to be in the finals. I was a Heidi fan. The shade that this bitch threw was crucial. And she met that shit and she backed that up with her chest. I loved me some Heidi. Heidi was my favorite the whole season. And I was like, come on, get it together, Heidi. You can't be in the bottom no more. You gotta make it. I was just so heartbroken. I wish that she would have made it in the season, in the finals though. But the finalist that was there, I, I love the fact that she was the finalist, but I'm pissed off because I feel like the other, um, what, Sherry Pie, she took up a spot. Heidi probably would have had. Like, I feel like she took up that space and she took away an opportunity for somebody else to be in the finals. Because if y'all don't know, she got disqualified for saying some shit in the workroom about her uh, getting, like, pretty much blackmailing 
other men to send her like pictures and shit like that and would use the pictures to blackmail them and like like I mean like risque like pictures of themselves thinking that she was gonna she was like a talent agent or something and she was gonna get them I'm like wow I was like I didn't know people did that like I didn't know people really like did that shit and she got this she was supposed to be in the finals too she was supposed to be part of the final four she got disqualified so then it just went down to those three which I feel like she was holding up a space and if this bitch wouldn't have did that I feel like Heidi would have been in the final four like dead ass <laughs> like that's how I feel but who was your favorites from the last season? And do you watch the Celebrity Drag Race? Because I don't have it set to record because I have a lot of shit set to record. <coughs> but I will go on like VH1 and like actually look at it on TV. So, uh, yeah, what are y'all looking at now? And I heard that uh, The Help is trending on Netflix now. Why is The Help trending on Netflix? I look, I like the help. I love the help. That was a funny ass movie. But with everything going on right now, why is that the movie that's trending? Like out of all of the movies, that's the movie that's trending. Like is that what white people run to look at during times like this? Like let's get some information. Let's look at the help. There are so many other movies that y'all could be looking at that are like beneficial to now. But it's crazy because looking at the help and looking how like they treated black people. Some of y'all still treat black people the same way today, just to let y'all know. Since y'all was, since it's trending, which it might be us that's got it trending too. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, that's all I have for y'all right now. I do plan on finishing White Fragility today because it's only two hours. But like I said, I'm about to go inside and look at TV. And, um, shit is going to be storming. It's not like I'm going to have anything else to do. <laughs> but stay in the house anyway. But yeah, see you guys later. I hope y'all have a good evening and hope y'all have a safe evening. Well, safe period. Y'all stay safe. I love you guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys later. Bye.